Dr. Bob Grzanik. I've been in the profession for about 25 years. Uh, what makes me unique is that I kind of treat each person like a family member. So I really care about people that I see. And I've also, I've always been curious about peak performance, peak experiences from some of Maslow's work. He was a psychologist in the 60s that talked about uh, peak experiences. So back in college, I kind of went, why can't we live in a peak experience? So that's what I've, I've thrived to do all the time. And through my experiences of acupuncture, which is kind of a misnomer because people don't understand that acupuncture is a system that is built into oriental medicine. It's like a branch of a tree. It's just not one thing. So it's kind of a uh, belief system that people think, oh, acupuncture is just this. Well, acupuncture can help with physical performance, mental performance, all kinds of performances, just not to treat pain. So I've really... Uh, traveled the world to learn things like little gold nuggets to make things better. So I've been all over the world to kind of do that and I can just help people perform better in sports and in life. Many facets. So uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure would be a very good uh, way to start that conversation and say, hey, if we can be proactive in our proprioception awareness of how people move and how they use their bodies, it's going to lessen injuries dramatically, but also it's going to help them perform better. So most people always think about, oh, injuries, injuries, injuries. I was talking about peak performance or in the human body, how do we keep elasticity? I always kind of show people like if I was 99 years old, I was bent like this. No one ever told me that, hey, I can move like this when I'm 99 years old, but you can. In our society, we kind of, well, that's just the way it is. And I'm here to say that's not the way it is. So I've kind of figured out some ways to kind of assist the human body to expand itself from a mental point of view, but also a physical point of view. It's a very good question. Many ways to look at that. So you go, okay, 23 to 25 years experience working with professional athletes uh, working with Olympic sprinters, and that's where I learned a lot of information about how the body moves because these are the fastest people in the world. So if you see them run and move, how their body has to function a certain way, based off of that paradigm, everything else you see is like, wow, this is easy compared to those guys because they're ultimate force, ultimate power all the time. So when I worked with these guys, I figured out that their big toes were off people go, what, the big toe is rough? Yes, the Olympic sprinter's toe is turned off, he cannot run. So I kind of went, well, what happens in these guys? Who else is it happening? See it in all levels of sports. So that's one thing. So it's looking at the body, it's not treating the body. Most people think acupuncture is just pain relief. And acupuncture is usually defined by traditional Chinese medicine. It's called TCM. 99% of people that do acupuncture do that. But unfortunately, that was, just, that was created in the 1950s by communist China to take acupuncture and Western medicine just combine it together and make China look good. So I actually studied meridian therapy with the Japanese and said, yes, TCM is something that can help, but it's not as deep as what meridian therapy is. And also because of Confucianism, you couldn't palpate the body in China. So when I met these Chinese guys, palpated the body, trained with these guys that were actually blind, they would say, okay, I'd like you to feel for the rotten apple on the skin. At first you're kind of like, what? Rotten apple on the skin? All of a sudden, you're like, wow, oh, it's a rat on the skin. You'd feel that. So I developed like a six and seven sense. But then they'd go deeper and say, hey, feel for the cotton ball on the leaf. So I can just feel things and know where people have an issue and just get rid of it very, very quickly versus just treating people to get rid of some pain. Nothing against pain, but pain's a, like, why do you even have the pain? We want to go beyond that and say, why can't you have peak experiences, performance all the time? So the first team I ever worked with was the first professional team I ever worked with was the Milwaukee Bucks in 1997. I used to work with George Carl's AU team, uh, Friends of Hoop, in the summer. And George would go, "Hey," he goes, "How in the heck did you heal this guy's ankle in like two days?" So we had this one player who was a very good player, but he's going to be out for a whole month. Saw him two or three days, and he was healed. And George goes, "Wow," he goes, "I might, I might use you this year." 
I get a call from George here. We got this guy named Sam Cassell. We're going to give you three days to help out his ankle. One day was better. And I said, George, who in your team isn't performing the best they could be? He goes, oh, Big Dog, Glenn Robinson. So okay, let me work with Big Dog. He says, why would you want to work with Big Dog? He doesn't have an issue. I said, well, let's see if we can enhance his performance. And real quick on that, when I first got into this, I studied all the acupuncture points when I was in school in 1994-95 from a point of view of being a sports person. So I'd read all the ancient texts that would talk about, like, this point could do that or this. But what I really, really came across was they'd talk about something called wasting syndrome, where the body would waste away a particular point was used and the body would function better. So I, I kind of went, well, if it's being used for that, why can't we use it on normal people? So I started using it myself first. I'm, I've been the biggest test lab of anyone myself. So everything I tell that I've done, I've done at least a thousand times myself to actually get it kind of like I can feel that. So for me, it's not thinking about it. It's actually feeling it in the body. So a lot of people always want to talk about, well, 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 knowledge. I'm like, no, no, here's the deal. Feel it, feel it, feel it, get you through. So I work with the Bucks, work on Glad Roms, and goes out and has three crazy games, you know, 40 points, 20 rebounds, and it's like, wow. So that was one incident. I had an Olympic sprinter who was a 10.15 runner, five treatments. He ran a 9.88. Another guy was a 400-meter runner, 46.2, ran a 44.2, I believe. I've also worked with the team, the Cincinnati Bengals. I can't remember the exact year, but they were projected to be 0-16. It ended up being 9-7, and worked with about 10 athletes. Someone got hurt that year. The guy I've worked with the most, though, is Jamal Crawford. We could say that I'm probably his fountain of youth connection. Good question. So a different way to view that is like, how are people being regenerated or nurtured? Things we don't like to talk about in our society. So I'll, I'll treat a lot of people and they'll be like, wow, I feel really, really, really tired. I kind of think to myself, are you tired or are you relaxed? Most people are actually relaxed for the first time, not even tired, and they go, wow, it's feel, I feel like I'm re rejuvenated. So I had, a number of years ago, a bunch of high school kids came in and they're like, Dr. Bob, you know what you have here, man? You have an energy spa. You come in for the energy, you leave like you're new. It's un unreal. So for NBA players, you can keep that energy going. Think of it kind of like a balloon. Keep energy in the balloons like air. You keep it full, not deflated. So the actual energy will actually pick up. So a lot of people I treat, one of our indicators is like, okay, you have a treatment. What do you notice? Not, hey, I just treated you. See you later. I'm always asking a feedback loop question, like, what do you notice? What do you notice? What do you notice? Because you, you'll gather or hear like little clues. So most people always tell me they feel taller, and it's a lot easier to move. Oh, no level because then you kind of like, you. it's almost like I always, you always look at a person's blueprint. So you're like in the blueprint of who they are. You just understand how they kind of are and you can assist them even greater. So I always say, you know, if I work with an NBA team, I'm just throwing this out there. I could help them win at least 10 more games a year easily. Playoffs, probably 3.5 games. Why? Just from the point of view of like, think of like a, f a fuel tank in a car. Full tank of energy, low tank of energy. Season starts, energy goes down. I can keep the energy up here, but also there's something called a flow state or when people go into a deep kind of zone state. So with functional MRIs in the last five years, we've seen that acupuncture when performed causes the prefrontal cortex to deactivate to go into a flow state. So I always ask athletes, hey, what's the best you've ever performed in your sport? And they'll give me a little story. Usually it goes along like this. It's like everything slowed down. It was kind of magical. I could hear I could hear things differently, or I was just totally like submerged in what I was doing. So, acupuncture can actually cause the brain, like a muscle, to develop itself. So the prefrontal cortex deactivates quicker, and you go into a flow state. More. Very good question. So a simple way to view that from a Western point of view would be like there's too much dopamine in the system, so it's causing too much dopamine to be produced so that the body becomes addicted. It's like you're always looking at a screen. You always want to have some feedback loop right in front of you. Boom, 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 boom. But that wears you out because you're always looking for that hit, and it causes your adrenal glands to be affected. So acupuncture, and also I do energetic technology, so let's make sure we're aware of that. So that's like biophotons, different pieces of uh, noble metals, 
all kinds of unique, unique, unique things from all over the world. But going back to the uh, dopamine, so people are dopamine addicted, they kind of feel isolated. They're always looking at screens. Serotonin levels help you relax. So w when you're in a group or you're just talking, serotonin is produced. You feel a lot, lot, lot more kind of like connected into a tribe or a group. So acupuncture helps with that. But also, for me, I've really gotten into the concept of like listening to people talk about their consciousness. And I always tell people, it's like you're part of my family. Like if I'm treating you, we're part of this group. It's not like, hey, I got to treat you, see you later. It's more like, wow, like there's a deep connection here. So it just gets deeper, deeper. People then can relax versus always kind of being on. People don't get that. So you got to turn off the switch sometimes. So the acupuncture by its very nature, I tell people the needles that you think about are like antenna. They're in your body. And what's the body mostly made above? Water. They're moving things around your hormones that cause your brain to relax so you can actually reset how you perceive what I call stress. Now, note also, people come and see me and I always talk about stress. They tell me two things. Oh, really stressed. And they always point to their shoulders here. And I go, okay, you show me around the room where the stress is. People always go, well, it's really not there. It's uh, uh, but whatever. And I go, oh, it's a perception. Or you're not breathing correctly. You're an upper thoracic breather. So what do we notice in basketball? If you're a good foul shooter, deep breath, take a shot. So you're always taking deep breaths. So with acupuncture, you find that your percent of oxygen in your body increases dramatically. So you can treat people right after a game, and the premise there would be like that gas tank. Energy's down, energy's back in. You can do a quick treatment right before, say, you get on a plane. It takes five minutes. Um, people then will f have more energy in their system to then regenerate, quote, get rid of inflammation and such. You can also treat on the plane, and that's where you can get into some other facets of, like, people might call it, like, biohacking. I don't like that term. There's ancient technologies that can, you can assist while you're on a plane that will help regenerate you. So there's two levels of that. One is, it's like a coach. Like, when do you coach your best? When are you zoned in? So sometimes coaches think too much or they go with their feel. Their feel will greatly enhance. They'll think less. They'll be more tuned in. It's like, if you're a good point guard, you just threw the pass. You know, it was there. It's like a coach says, hey, we're going to sub this guy and this guy in. Just trust the process. Also, it goes back to that serotonin versus dopamine. The coach is all stressed out, blah, 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 whatever. The coaching staff's all mad. More dopamine in the system. Acupuncture, more serotonin more serotonin for the players, everyone gets along, people listen better, people are more connected. There's been a few studies with acupuncture when it goes into prisons. You see about a 50% reduction in fights in the first week. People are like, well, how could that be? It's changing the brain, people are more relaxed. Very good question. So every player is unique. So it goes back to what I said before. If you work with a player long enough, you'll see unique movement patterns they have. So everyone has to go through like a assessment of like certain muscle movements in the body. So you can check if a muscle is on or off in the body in real time. It doesn't have to be an MRI, any test where we're looking for something negative. It's just pure functionality of the muscles. When you do that, all of a sudden it's like, wow, this one muscle works and six other ones work. If that one muscle's off, Eight others don't work. So I see a lot of people just overtrain because they do the same movement pattern. And getting back to training, it's like, are you training for skill? Are you training for, say, endurance? Whatever it might be, make sure it's mindful training. I can also, though, treat people after they train to help them lock in what they've just trained to get better. One of the premises is that in the body you have something called mitochondria. So Western studies will say that when acupuncture is performed, mitochondrial enhancement occurs. I also use cold lasers with different frequencies that enhance the mitochondria in the body. There's something called a moxa stick. So that all goes back to this concept. When you think about mitochondria, it's just like the ancient Chinese would say qi. Qi isn't a weird term. It means mitochondria. It's like the same thing. That's just what they called it. So. Certain foods you eat could be hot, warm, neutral, cool, or cold. You can also get into some Chinese herbs that have regenerative properties, particularly for sports where they help the joints, ligaments, and tendons 
heal quicker. But what people don't realize, there's actually something called levity. There's actually like space in your in your tissue. That's unfortunately when people age, they kind of shrink. They've lost that levity. So there's different things you can do to keep that space. So a timeout is a pit stop. It's like, or whatever's going on. So if someone is off in a game, if I'm around 99% of the time, I can get that person back tuned in. But then we also want to take a history. Like, why did you, why did, what happened to you? So you didn't warm up correctly, something occurred, blah, 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 whatever. We can figure it out in real time. So for people, it's like, we could talk about something conceptually, like, you know, oh, this, you know, we talk, unless you actually experience it, you're not going to know. And people, I always tell when I'm doing a, like, tuned in job, or I describe, like, I'm always hitting a bullseye, like I'm hitting the yellow, people will literally smile and go, what the heck? I see it all the time. But for me, that's very fulfilling because that smile increases serotonin, but the athlete will actually will feel that. Quick story to that is, uh, when I work with these Olympic sprinters, they actually thought they were running slower because they couldn't feel the tension in their body. This was like 12 years ago, and I kind of went, what the heck? It made me realize that people are used to tension. They don't know how to function without tension. So I kind of went, well, what if they didn't have tension? And these guys were like, what the, oh my gosh, I can't believe how much better I feel. So the person I work with the most is Jamal Crawford. He would say that with the treatment, he feels taller and he is bouncier easily. As many wins possible, get quality paper. Thanks, Jamal. Congratulations. Jamal, what's up? Uh, quick story with Jamal when he was with the Clippers. I'm not sure exactly what year, but they were going to play the Miami Heat. I get a call, hey, I'm going to be out for a whole month. I really hurt one of my discs in my back. I'm in trouble. I'm like, Jamal, okay, I'll be down. Treat him one treatment. He plays the next day, he has 28 points. And not that it's good or bad, but he put Ray Allen on skates, <laughs> fell down. Um, also did some work with Brandon Roy when he had surgery in his cartilage, got him back quicker. He didn't follow through with it, nor did his organization because they couldn't believe he healed so much quicker. But you can usually heal things 50% quicker if there is some form of surgery or any injury in general. The guy I probably worked with the most in football um, in the past was Bobby Ingram. At the age he was 34, he used to live by me and say, Bobby, you really want to tune in, man. Come and see me three times a week. He says, man, three times a week? Why do I want to do that? I said, you just tell me, man. That year, at the age of 34, he had his best year ever with the Seahawks. He, I believe, had like 1,200 yards and I want to say like 90 receptions. One game against the Cleveland Browns, he had 20 receptions. Mm -hmm. What he described to me is he goes, it's kind of weird, man. He goes, I feel like I have like a force field where I just feel like I have more energy around me. So, so working with elite athletes for each sport gives you a unique ability to work with like kind of the cream of the crop or top of the mountain. So a little bit here or there goes a long, long way. So that's why I always ask the question, what do you notice, what do you feel? And for each athlete, it's very unique for what they experience, what their positives might be, or maybe what a negative issue might be. But you always want to do a thorough history to see, hey, Let's go all the way back in history and see if there's anything going on because that'll give you some clues about maybe we still haven't cleared out this old injury in your history. But if we do find it, pff, straightforward. But also, remember, we're talking about injuries here, but people don't understand the paradigm of like performance enhancement. To me, that's the funniest. That's, people see that, it's like, wow, what just happened, man? We're, we're cooking, like, can't believe how I feel. That, that's a lot of fun because other people sense it and it's kind of contagious. So when I worked with Milwaukee Bucks, I said, okay, George, let me treat the whole team. Treat the whole team, why would you want to do that? Well, I have this idea, there's something called swarm theory. It's based on the fact that if you see fish that are all kind of school in a school together, one moves and they all move together. One bird moves and they're all fine, they all move. He kind of goes, that's interesting. So I treated all their players before one game. They, uh, in the first quarter, were up 42 to 12 in that game. The players responded to me that, it was like I knew it was just there, it's like I was connected. Yeah. Um, Plus, it's fun. So people, also, I always tell people one of my slogans is like fundamentals. If you understand fundamentals, deals with fun and function. So there's a lot of F-U-N in there. <laughs>